Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a clean install of the Linux distribution CentOS 64-bit. This is the newest, most current one out right now. And CentOS is built off of Red Hat and is used in a lot, and I do mean a lot, of enterprise environments. So it's not too uncommon in a lot of workplaces to see the CentOS system. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to install CentOS 7. Hit enter, naturally. And that's going to start up the installer, which will let us do the drive configuration and set up what the uh, root password is going to be, set up a user account, and do the overall system configuration. CentOS for the most part is a very very stable Linux operating system. It's been around for quite a while now and works very 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 well. Um, there's quite a few of your enterprise environments that have a tendency if they don't use Oracle to use CentOS for a lot of their database administration and some of them also use CentOS for a uh, network Accessible Storage, or a NAS. Lots and lots of uses for CentOS. I mean, it is a Linux distribution after all, so there's lots of things you can do. Once you get to the welcome screen for the graphical installer, you can select your language. If you're in the United States, you're going to want to leave it on English and English United States and click Continue. Now you're going to want to set your date time, so click there. Um, for this, probably not going to use New York because this is central time. So instead I'm going to click over here. And since it defaulted to Chicago, that's absolutely fine. Chicago will work, it is in central time. And I don't want it in a 24 hour format, so I'm going to select the AM PM and then click done. Now the keyboard layout is English US so I can leave that alone. The language support is English US. Then you have your installation source, your software selection and the installation destination. The installation software source is going to be the local media which is the... I'm using an ISO on this one. It's just like as if I actually had the disk, disk burnt. You're going to need either a bootable USB drive or you're going to need the uh, a burnt DVD or if you can do it by ISO, you can use the ISO. This is running in virtual box and a virtual machine for the demonstration, so it's running as though it's running off of the DVD. So this is exactly what it'll look like if you're running the DVD. So for the software selection, we can set up a lot of options. There's the file and print server. You will need that for running Samba for Windows or to install NAS, set up your own Linux uh, network accessible storage system. Lots of different configurations. If you want the GNOME desktop, you're going to want to select that. You can set up the uh, KDE Plasma workspace if you prefer one that looks almost identical to Windows. And if you're going to do uh, development, you can select the development option instead. For this one, I'm not really going to run it as a server. You have the infrastructure server right there, computer node. I'm going to set it up as a GNOME desktop. And then, of course, you can add in your add-in environment over here. So we're going to include a common set of GNOME applications. I'm not worried about a backup client. I'm not worried about the legacy X Windows compatibility. We do want Internet applications. We do want the Internet or the Office Suite in productivity. I don't use smart card. If you do use a smart card in an enterprise environment, you can select that. Um, compatibility libraries for older versions of CentOS Linux. And then you have development tools and security tools. I don't really want any of those. I'm just going to run this as a standard install for a desktop system. So this right here will work fine. You can always go back and add more later any real time you want to. So with that being said, I'm going to click Done, and I'm 
Now both of those are set up and ready to go. So now we need to come down here and ch set up our installation destination, which as you can see is to the 30 gig hard drive. And you can see here how it has the automatically configure partition. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on the automatic configuration. And I'm going to come up here and click done. Now you'll see that that one goes away and you have K-Dump. K-Dump is enabled. You can disable K-Dump, but you're really going to want it to do a K-Dump if it crashes. So that way you have the kernel dump necessary if you have any problems to be able to send to CentOS. So that way they can go in and investigate what went on with the machine and why it crashed. So now we're going to set up our network. Which, as you can see, it says that it's already connected up to the Ethernet. Everything's all good. If you have a wireless, you can select the wireless here, put in your passphrase. And once you get all that configured, click Done. And now you can come down here and click Begin Installation. Once you get to this point, you're going to want to click on the root password. Set a strong root password. With a very strong root password, this makes it to where you can do things as root for installing uh, programs, applications, for doing configuration changes, all kinds of good stuff. But not have to be running as the elevated root user to do everything. So once we have the root set, we'll come over here to user creation and we'll go ahead and set up our user. You do not want to make the user an administrator. Granted, yes, you have the root account on a desktop. You want to leave it like that. If you're in an enterprise environment and you do have administrators, you can set up administrator accounts for those admins only. The other thing to do is to make sure every standard user is set up as a standard user and does not have admin privileges to the system. You don't want everybody and their dog running as admin. And then you can just set up the password here. I highly recommend a strong password, but you can set up whatever you want. As you can see by this password, it rates it as weak because it is a weak password. It's pretty easy to guess and most brute force tools can crack this password pretty easy. Given the fact that this is a lab system set up for demonstration purposes, I personally don't care. I'm going to make it a simple password. You can come down here and click advanced to be able to set up different options manually. Mostly you're not really going to need to do that. I mean, if you're more advanced with Linux, you can come in here, you can set your uh, UID a whole lot easier and set it to what you want the value to be. You can set group memberships right here, and you can also set how you want the home directory set up and where you want it to map to. Mostly you're going to leave this alone. If you're new to Linux, this is your first time ever running CentOS, I wouldn't worry too much about that advanced option there. I would just come up here and click Done. And now you have all your users set up, you have root set up, so now it's just for the base install. CentOS is a very stable OS, it works very, very well, and it has a lot of really nifty applications, especially for a server setup, particularly NAS systems and things like that for file shares. So we're going to let this thing install, and I'll see you in just a little bit. As you can see, whenever it actually gets finished, it goes through its post-installation setup tasks, cleans up a bunch of garbage, and then it'll eventually get to the point that it's ready to reboot. Typical for most Linux distributions, once you reach the reboot point, the OS is installed. After you reboot, you are fully up and live. At that point, you log in and begin uni Yeah. At that point, you log in and begin using your operating system. Yes. It's there. And as you can see, whenever it's done, it asks you to hit the reboot button. So click reboot. Now it should boot back up into the operating system and be ready for the first login and use. All right, once you do the reboot, it's going to come up and it's going to have this licensing. And it's going to say license information, license not accepted. Click on that, go to I accept, and click done. 
now you can finish configuration. Don't forget to click that button. As you can see here, it gives you the option for not listed, which root will not be listed, but that's fine. You don't need to log in as root. Click on the user you have created, put in the password, and log in for the first time. Any updates, uh, package installation, anything you need to do as super user, you will use the root password. Try to do as little as possible as super user. As you can see, once you finally load up into the OS, this is the desktop you'll be staring at. Come up here, click Applications. There's your LibreOffice, Evolution Email, Firefox Web Browser. Pretty much every basic thing you need for a standard desktop system is here. This runs very, very well. I really like CentOS. It's not my preferred distro of choice. Whenever your welcome screen comes up on English or whatever language you selected, click Next, click Next, click Start Using CentOS Linux. And now it's going to take you to the Getting Started on GNOME Help. You can close that. You really don't need it. You can browse through it if you want to. It does give you some base information like the date and time and time zone, the wallpaper, all that good stuff. I don't particularly need that. If you want to sit there and dig through it, feel free by all means. And your OS is set up and ready to rock and roll. You can come down here and go through all four of your different workspaces. You can actually configure it to give you more if needed. It's up and running and ready for you to do whatever you want with the operating system. This information is out there for absolutely everybody. As always, watch, like, and share. Have yourselves a great day.